Welcome to part four of the ultimate guide to selling internationally using Magento and M2E Pro. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding in the store views into our Magento system. Yay, the hands-on one. Excellent. So this is where you're going to be getting hands-on and following us along in a few moments time. And you're going to be adding in two new store views into your Magento system. And those two store views are going to be one for eBay Germany and one for eBay Australia. Now we're using Germany and Australia as we mentioned in the earlier tutorials for the polarity between using an English site and using a foreign speaking site. And if you're not using Germany, Australia, you could use whichever eBay sites you want to start selling onto. You could be using America, you could be using France, whichever ones. But for our examples, we're using Germany and Australia. Yeah, because we're picking the awkward one in there just to cover all the bases for you. And by the way, if you want to add in Spain, Italy, France and so on and so forth and the US, please do so. We're just using these two as an example to give you a comprehensive set of tutorials. But if you want to add in more sites, then that's up to you. Please do that while you're going through these tutorials. Customize these tutorials to you and your business. We're using two just to keep the length down. We don't want to bore you with a lot of repetition. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we will be speeding through the repetition pieces in here as well. Because again, you're bright bunnies now with Magento and M3 Pro. So Matt, to ask an obvious question, why would we want to add in separate store views in the first place? Brilliant question, Dave. And that is straight down to control. If you add in additional store views in Magento, which I do hasten to add is like this is default functionality in Magento, is that it's going to give you complete control over not only your orders, but also the ability to customize your product descriptions for the different eBay sites much, much more easily. So if you want a separate listing title, maybe a separate description, which is in a different language, or have some tweaks between the English languages. So maybe to put a U in, if you're going to be selling into the UK, or taking a U out to then go and sell onto eBay.com, for example, because there's spelling differences for like favorite and color, for example. Store views are going to give you maximum control over this. And would they also get tied up with the listing groups, which we'll be creating later on in this course. So Dave, to answer your question, one word, control. Awesome. Sounds good. Now, there is a big, red, scary warning box on your screen. Now, if you know me and Dave and you followed us along in any of these other video tutorials, you will know that we use this red warning box very, very sparingly. I think it's in about three video tutorials out of 200, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, something like that. It's a pretty special box. <laughs> okay, this is a very special box, and it's a very special point. Before you continue with this video tutorial, you must go and make a backup of your Magento website, and we mean right now. It only takes a few minutes to make a backup of your Magento website, and there is a dedicated video tutorial on how to do this underneath this video. Now, Dave, we had to quickly check on this a few moments ago, didn't we? It's about three clicks or about three and a half clicks to back up Magento. Okay, it's really straightforward with Installatron, but please don't skip over this message. Really do go and pause this video right now and go and make a backup of your Magento website because we are going to be changing settings in here. And if it does go wrong, which will be extremely rare if this happens, you do have a backup. And of course, you can make a backup right now. Go and make the changes which we're going to explain in the next video tutorials. And if you want to wind back to like ground zero, you can do because you have that backup in place. So with that said, Matt, I'm going to assume that you have just hit play after going doing your backup and we're now ready to get stuck in. Indeed. And if you've just been naughty, we really do mean it. <laughs> really do go back and make a backup. We've only used that warning box in a handful, but like we can count them on one hand during these video tutorials. So please do go make a backup. Yeah, we don't want to see that forum post where it's like, oh my God, my system has locked me out or has changed and I can't get it back. This is why we do the backups. Yeah, so... Enough said there, go and make your backup. And that said, 
Let's go and do this, and we'll catch up in Magenta with you in a few moments' time. So, Dave, we've jumped across to Magento, and this is where we get hands-on. And the first thing which we want to do is add in these additional store views to our Magento site. And to do that, we need to go to System, then go down to Manage Stores at the bottom, and then you'll have a page like this. And I'm just going to pause for a few moments to point out the three sections which we've got on here. We've got our website on the left-hand side. In the middle, we've got a store name. And then on the right-hand side, we've got our store view names. And this is what we're going to be adding. We're going to be adding in two new store views to our Magento store, which is part of our website. Does that make sense, Dave? Makes sense so far. Excellent. So we need to click on this button which says Create Store View. And we'll click into there. Then on the next page, we're going to leave the store as English. And we're going to name this eBay DE. So we're going to do the German one first, Dave. Then we're going to set the code to eBay, all lowercase, underscore DE. OK, so this is the key for this one here, is that it's all in lowercase. And we've prefixed it with eBay and then underscore DE, which is the short code for Germany. Make sure the status is disabled and then the sort order, you can leave that as blank. And then press Save Store View in the top right hand corner. So there's our first one done. We can see that we've got a warning message up here about indexes, and we'll look at that in a few moments' time. Let's go and create our second store view. So we're going to click on Create Store View, just like before. We're going to call this one eBay AU for Australia. Now, a little note here, of course, if you're selling or going to be selling onto eBay America, so eBay US, then call it eBay US. So if you're going to be selling in France, then call it eBay FR or Spain eBay ES, for example. OK, so with that said, let's put in eBay underscore AU. OK, and again, I'm going to leave the status as disabled and then go and click on Save Store View. So what does the code do, Matt? I know we've got that all under. Is that something that we would use for importing? Is that where that would come in handy for importing to a store view? <laughs> you're a smart bunny. Yes, <laughs> that's the code which you would use if you were using Magme or something like that to import Pacific product data into a Pacific store view within Magento. You can also use those internal codes for switching Magento sites as well. And if you maybe have a different domain name in your index.php file. Sorry, this is getting a little bit geeky a little bit quickly. OK, but you can use it to swap based upon domain name, for example, which store view your customer goes to based upon that internal code. So we've only got two in there, and we'll see that we now got eBay AU, and we've got eBay DE, and of course, if you're adding in additional eBay sites where you're doing this, please carry on and add those in as well. Now, a little note here is that we just need to make sure that our store name in the middle is still set to our original site. So our original site was OSOU and it had the code of default. So if we then click on to our store name, so whatever your store name in the middle of this page is called, click into here and just make sure that it's been set to the default store view and then whatever your default store view was before. OK, so ours was also you. So with that done, just press Save Store at the top. Now, there is a special note here for any users which have been and followed us along from the other video tutorials, maybe like the Ultimo course, Dave, where we show you how to build a fully responsive Magento website on a budget of literally $99, which is about £60. Now, if that is you, OK, and you do have Ultimo installed, then what you're going to need to do is do some extra additional, some additional steps. And it's really straightforward because all you need to do is just go into a couple of sections and press save. It's like really straightforward, Dave. Yeah, sounds easy. So if you now go to system, into configuration, and again, this is just for those of you which have followed us along for the Ultimo and the responsive Magento design course. Scroll down and then go into your theme settings and press save. Literally just go in there and press save. Go into theme design and then press save config at the top. And the same for theme layout as well. 
go in there and press save config. And the reason why you're going to do that is because then Ultimo will regenerate the CSS files for each of the store views. And of course, that then means that your main website carries on working. Now, to wrap this up, there are two other tasks which we need to complete, and they're really straightforward. And the first one is to re-index our website. So we need to go to System, then into Index Management, and we'll see that we've got re-index required on a couple of these days. Yeah, make it nice and easy with the big red boxes. Yes, indeed. We're going to go and re-index those. Now, obviously, if you've got a rather large Magento website, then you'll probably want to go and do that via the command line interface or just wait for your cron to run. And if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, just ignore me. The other thing which we need to do is clear out our caches. So we need to go to System, down into Cache Management. Then on the left-hand side, click on Select All, so they're all ticked. Then click on Submit on the right hand side that will take a few moments to go through and then you also want to do the other two magento caches which is this first one at the top flush magento cache and just wait for that to finish and the other one is the cache storage and then click on ok now that will take a few moments to run and there we go it's been finished now because we've been in added in these additional store views the most obvious place where you're going to see an extra drop down box is in with your products. So let's go and have a quick look there right now. So if you go to catalog and then manage products, is that we'll now see is that we've got this extra drop down box here, Dave. It says choose your store, and you've now got two additional store views in here. You've got eBay AU, eBay DE, and then in our case, it's called OCU because that's what we named our original store view for our Magento website. So look out for that extra box on the top left hand corner. And also is that if we go into a product as well, is that we will now see that we've got this drop down box in here. OK, so we can override these settings on a per store view basis. So let's choose a really simple example. Let's go and change this to eBay DE. So let me click on OK on there a moment. And the best way of explaining this is that it's like an onion. The outer shell is the top level up here, the default values. Let me just jump back there a moment. So that's the outer shell of our onion. That's all of our defaults, Dave. So that's our default title. That's our default description and our default bullet points as well. And then maybe you wanted a different description for eBay Germany, for example. So we change our store view on the left. We go inside of the onion. OK, we go down a layer. And if we wanted to, OK, so where we've got website title is that if we wanted to change that title to a German title, so German title here, we can do that in the lower store view within our Magento website. Also, I'm going to point out here on the left hand side. So let's just go back before we do any further. Let's go back to our default values on the left hand side. And I'm also going to point out that you're going to probably have a new tab called websites on the left hand side as well. And that's where you can enable. And again, you'll need to tick that for your products so that they do come out on your website. And they're also available for the other eBay sites as well. And again, the reason why I've just paused to show you that one is that number one, I've run into this myself before in the past. I have had an item, Dave, which just won't list onto eBay. And I don't <laughs> understand the error message. And the error message was basically saying no price set or no quantity available. And I know full well that there's a quantity on that product. And the reason for that is that back here in the inventory system is that we need to tick marketplaces or tick your website. So then it's then enabled for your products. And of course, if we go back to catalog and then manage products, then you're gonna have this additional column on the right hand side for the websites as well. Now, we're not setting up Magento to power additional websites during this tutorial, but we are setting Magento up to have multiple store views so that you can have maximum control over your eBay listings. All straightforward, Dave? All nice and easy, mate. Excellent. So for myself, Matt. And for me, Dave. Cheerios. So for myself, Matt, and of course, Dave too, we both hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, we'd both really appreciate a thumbs up on YouTube, either at the top of this video 
or down at the bottom. So on screen right now, we have the next part of this tutorial. So if you just click on the next tutorial button, which is in the top right hand part of the screen, you'll head on over there right now. If you would like to be notified of the latest video tutorials that myself and Dave publish on YouTube, then also press the subscribe button underneath this video as well. And with that said, we'll see you in the next tutorial. Matt and Dave. <laughs>